Hey everybody, welcome back. We're moving along with another setup video for Home Assistant. This is a continuation of the last video where we set up a Raspberry Pi 4 and got Home Assistant installed. So we're starting this video with a completely clean slate, and I'm going to be doing this from a Windows 10 machine. I know I said I wanted this to be the last setup video before we got to the real stuff, but I don't want this one to run on too long, so I've split the content into two videos, which will both get uploaded at the same time. In this one, we're going to install what I consider essential add-ons for what we'll be doing. And in the other video, we're going to get remote access set up so you can see and control Home Assistant when you're away from home. And we'll also quickly set up a new dashboard. So first things first, let's make sure our Pi is completely up to date. Go to Supervisor, then if you have an update available, run it. It'll take a few minutes and then Home Assistant will restart when it's done. Now, click your username in the bottom left and turn on Advanced Mode, which will give us a little more control over the system and lets us see some things that we wouldn't see otherwise. Now click Supervisor and go to the Add-ons tab, and the first add-on we'll get is the File Editor. The File Editor is going to allow us to easily edit our YAML files from within Home Assistant. So click Install. When it's done, start the add-on and click Show in Sidebar, and you'll get a new tab on the left that you can now use to access the file editor. So hop into your file editor and select configuration.yaml from the folder in the top left. This is probably the most important file that you're going to edit in here. This configuration file is where we'll be manually adding things to Home Assistant that can't be added through other methods like integrations. Just to give you an idea of how adding stuff to this configuration file works, I'm going to take a little piece of code from the Home Assistant documentation. This is for an input boolean. So we're going to paste this into our configuration.yaml, and this is going to give us a little toggle switch. And this is totally unrelated to anything that we're doing. We're going to get rid of this in a little bit, but this is just for a demonstration. So I've got this saved in my configuration file now, and if I go to my overview, I see that nothing has changed. I still don't see this toggle that we just added, and that's because whenever you make a change to the configuration.yaml file, you're going to have to restart Home Assistant before you see that change take effect. So I'm going to validate the configuration, which we'll talk about a little bit more soon, and then I'm going to restart Home Assistant. And now that Home Assistant has restarted, we can see in the overview our new toggle switch, which doesn't really do anything because we haven't told it to do anything yet. But I just wanted to demonstrate the link of adding a few lines of text in the configuration.yaml file and then getting some sort of usable entity out of it. And we're going to be adding a whole variety of different things in this manner. When we edit files using this file editor add-on, we'll be working with the YAML language. YAML stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language. In YAML, the formatting of your text is extremely important, especially spacing. If your formatting is screwed up, you'll see a red exclamation mark in the top right that indicates that you have an error. See how precise you need to be with your spacing? When you have proper formatting, the icon in the top right will turn to a green check mark. It's very important to note that this check mark is only looking at spacing and hyphens and whatnot, and it does not guarantee that you don't have any errors in the content of your text. If you screw something up, like misspell one of these keywords, you'll get a green check mark, but if you were to restart, this could screw up your install to the point where it won't boot to allow you to access it from the web page like normal, and you may have to restore a backup to get it going again with an add-on we'll install later called Samba Share. It's for this reason that it is super important that whenever you make changes to anything in the file editor, hit the save button when you're done, but do not restart Home Assistant before validating your configuration file. To do this validation, go to Configuration, then Server Control, and click Check Configuration. And this will tell you if you're good to go ahead and restart Home Assistant. If there are errors in your config file, go fix them, save, and recheck until it's happy. If you can't see this check configuration option in server controls, make sure that advanced mode is turned on from within your username options. Okay, let's clear out that sample code that we added and we'll move on to our next add-on. Head on back over to the supervisor section, go to the add-on store and install Node-RED. This is what we'll use for building our automations. Click to show this in the sidebar as well. You won't be able to start this one until you configure it, so go over to the Configuration tab and enter a credential secret, which will be your password. 
I like using dark mode whenever I can, and you can toggle it on by changing this setting from false to true. The last thing to do in here is to change SSL from true to false. This is going to let us open node red with just a normal HTTP connection. If you try to open node red immediately after starting the add-on, you might see a 502 error. Just be patient and it'll start up shortly. If you want, you can watch the logs from within the add-on to see when the setup is finished. If there's an error, you'll see it here as well. The next one we're going to do is this add-on right here called SambaShare. This add-on will allow us to send and retrieve files to and from our Raspberry Pi from the computer we're using to program Home Assistant. Install it and then go over to Configuration. Set a password for it and then start the add-on. Once the add-on's running, click Start in Windows and type Windows Features and then you should see something pop up that says Turn Windows Features On and Off. Go down to SMB 1.0 CIFS File Sharing Support and make sure it's all checked. Now open up Windows Explorer and click on Network and you might see Home Assistant pop up here as a little blue icon. If it does, double click it and enter the username and password that you configured in the Samba add-on in Home Assistant. If this icon doesn't show up in your network devices, you might have to go up to the address bar and then just type backslash backslash and then the IP address of your Pi. When I do this, I get the prompt to enter my user and password and then once I'm in, I can now do things like copy my configuration file so I can move it onto my PC and edit it with a different uh, editor, or move files easily onto the Pi, like images or whatever else. SambaShare is also a great way to send snapshots or backups to your Pi. There's a decent chance that eventually you're going to make a mistake in your config file and find yourself unable to get into Home Assistant from your web browser. I really want to stress the importance of taking regular backups of your Pi. This is something that can actually be automated where you can schedule your system to back itself up and then send snapshots to Dropbox or a Google Drive or something it's sort of out of scope for this video. But at any rate, at the very least, you should be taking a snapshot of your working configuration before you make any significant changes and transfer these snapshots off of the Pi and onto your desktop or laptop. If you do screw something up and you can't get into Home Assistant, here's what you do. Use Etcher to flash the latest image of Home Assistant to your SD card just like we did the first time we set the system up. Install the fresh copy and then install SambaShare as your first add-on and get it up and running. Once you've got SambaShare going, you can now use it to take a backup file from your PC, transfer it over to your Pi, and then restore it. So I'm just going to go to Windows Explorer here, I'll find the location of the backup file, copy it, then navigate over to the Pi via SambaShare, go to the backup section, paste it in, and then once it's here, I should be able to refresh in the snapshot section, see it under available snapshots, and then restore the Pi with it. And now I'm back to a functional system without too much fuss. Nice, there's another one off the list. Next, we're going to install something called ESP Home, which is a fantastic add-on that allows us to very easily add ESP32 and ESP8266 devices into Home Assistant without having to write any Arduino code for them. These devices are wonderful little boards that we will be using to make our sensors wireless. You wire the sensor to the ESP, and then the ESP will communicate back to the Pi over Wi-Fi in order to pass the data from the sensors into Home Assistant. With the ESP Home add-on, we can very easily program these ESPs with YAML, just like we do in our Home Assistant config file. And it'll even flash the devices to get this programming into each board. Once the boards have been flashed for the first time using a micro USB cable, you can then push subsequent updates to the devices over Wi-Fi without having to connect a cable again. Awesome, right? Let's get it. In the video description below, find the link that I've included for github.com slash ESP Home slash Hassio and copy it. Now in the add-on store, click the three dots in the top right and add a repository. Paste this repository in and click Add. Now you're going to see ESP Home become available in the add-ons below. Select the one that just says ESP Home and install. 
no configuration is required for this add-on at startup, and we're not going to be adding any ESPs yet, but we'll be in here shortly. Let's do another add-on that I think we'll likely end up using down the road, Mosquito Broker. We're going to need Mosquito Broker if we're going to be using any MQTT in the future. MQTT is a nice little protocol that lets you easily send short messages between devices. And these messages consist of topics, which are sort of like the subject line in an email, and payloads, which would be more akin to the body of an email. You can set up devices to publish messages, listen to messages, or both. And you just need something in the middle to act as the server and direct these messages to the devices that want them. And this is the purpose of the Mosquito Broker add-on. On the ESP devices I'm using in my setup that aren't running ESP Home because they've got just too much going on, I'm using MQTT to transmit data between the ESP and my Pi running Home Assistant. Let's set this thing up so it's done. In the add-on store, find Mosquito Broker and install it. Go to Configuration, then Users, and add a user. We'll use this to connect devices to the broker. For the name and username, I'll just call it MQTT User. I'll give it a password, and then I'll save it. Now go back to the add-on and start it. Give it a little bit of time to get started. You can watch it in the logs as it boots up. And then once it's done, go to Configuration, Integrations, and you should see a new one called MQTT. Hit Configure, and then Submit. You should be up and running now, and you'll notice a new section in the Developer Tools tab called MQTT. This is where you can test your publishing and listening to make sure that your data is getting through properly. If you're a keener like me and you want to test your MQTT install, you can use a program like MQTT Box, which is my favorite. What you'll do is create an MQTT client, give it a name, any old name will do, under protocol, set it to MQTT TCP, and then use the username and password for the user that you just set up in Home Assistant a minute ago, and for host, use the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Save it, and you should see it connect. If it doesn't, you can check the logs in the MQTT add-on to see what's going on. You might have your login information incorrect or something. A bad password will trigger a notification in Home Assistant as well, saying that a login attempt has failed. Once connected, let's publish a topic from our computer to Home Assistant and see if it makes it through. Typically, topics are formatted with a more general identifier than a forward slash and a more descriptive word like, say, 4x4 slash humidity or 4x4 slash temp but you can just use a single word if you want. Now copy the topic that you picked and go into the developer tools in Home Assistant and select MQTT. Paste the topic into the listen to a topic section and start listening. Now go back to MQTT box and enter something in the payload area like 50% or something and publish it. If your setup is good, you should see it come through in Home Assistant. You can also test the other way too, so enter a topic in the publish a packet section and then copy this into the subscription section in your MQTT software on your computer and then subscribe to it. Publish a payload from Home Assistant and it should show up in your MQTT software. That is butt kicking, isn't it? So for instances where ESP Home isn't quite ideal, all you have to do is set up a small board like the ESP32 or 8266 to communicate with Home Assistant in this very same fashion. And there are example sketches in the Arduino IDE that make it pretty easy to write this code. Alright, I think this is a really good place to start with for add-ons. I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole and start losing people with some more complex stuff, but we'll certainly be adding some as we go down the road. You know, maybe something like uh, adding InfluxDB and Grafana, or something similar. If you guys have any add-ons that you consider essential, feel free to let me know in the comments and maybe we can address those in a future video as well. But let's start here and let's move on to the next step, which is getting remote access going.